address. Um, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Maheshwari Mohan for inviting me to this uh, extremely important um, seminar organized at a very critical time about the future of legal education. I would like to recognize the presence of distinguished judges from the Madras High Court, uh, my teacher and mentor, uh, Professor Kamala Shankaran, uh, also other distinguished lawyers and uh, law students, law academics, and many of us who are interested in legal education. So uh, the theme of this uh, meeting, or rather workshop, is about reimagining, revisiting legal education and legal profession. Let me quickly say that uh, uh, I was just telling uh, Professor Shankaran that uh, in these forums, uh, because of the dignity and respect that we have for institutions in general, we can't even talk about the extreme forms of crisis that is deeply embedded in our legal education and legal profession. But um, it's also important for us as lawyers who are trained to speak truth to power. And hence, uh, we need to reflect about some of these challenges. And so I will make an attempt to identify a few challenges, but also to help us uh, talk in terms of how we can uh, reimagine legal education. And I, my theme of my uh, keynote address is uh, building world-class law schools in India and what are the characteristics of world-class law schools and universities and how we can potentially aspire to build them. First, we suffer from a significant challenge in, in relation to uh, quality versus quantity. I don't know whether you know, but the students here, do you know how many law schools do we have? Any takers? Any guesses? Any student can answer that question. How many law schools do we have in India? All right, so I'll keep it easy for you. It's, uh, we have uh, nearly 1,700 law schools, uh, approximately 1,650. And I understand that there are a few hundred applications that are pending as we speak. So maybe in the next few months, we should be in a position to have a uh, few months, if not few years, we might end up having 2,000 law schools. A decade ago, we had half of them. Uh, so there has been an extraordinary uh, proliferation of law schools in India, which in itself is a significant challenge. But we also know that just uh, last year, uh, the chairman of the Bar Council of India uh, remarked that uh, maybe one third of those law schools should be closed. Uh, he quite, um, you know, in a way, lamented about the fact that most of our law schools suffer from quality and excellence, quality let alone excellence. And so, in a way, this, in this milieu in which, with such proliferation of law schools and our lack of effort to build institutes of excellence has undermined our ability to focus on uh, what ought to uh, really be taking place as far as law schools and legal education is concerned. And it has also had a deleterious impact on the legal profession in general. So with 1,650 law schools, we are graduating approximately 75,000 lawyers every year. And of course, India has approximately 1.4 million lawyers, which is not even an absolutely accurate statistics because we don't even have data. Uh, this data is not so accurate, but whatever estimates we have is we have that many lawyers. So uh, the first and very critical aspect that we need to address is how do we ensure that we have a more, uh, let's say, a stronger focus on quality when it comes to uh, legal education. Uh, it is also only fair to say that uh, because of this extraordinary uh, expansion in legal education, we have not been able to address uh, many fundamental issues that are uh, affecting uh, the legal profession itself. Uh, one of the things that uh, I also am worried about is that uh, sh what should we be doing about the three-year law program? Uh, while I have been a supporter of the five-year law program, I personally had the benefit of going to the Campus Law Center faculty of Delhi University and richly benefited by a strong emphasis on humanities and social sciences as a grounding before even entering into legal education. The expansion of the five-year law program in the form, starting with the national law schools in general and then to other institutions has also had its own impact. And I will just stop that part of my, what I wanted to say by saying that we have given far too much emphasis 
on what happens in national law schools with little focus on what happens in other law schools. There are approximately 25 national law schools in India today and these law schools together contribute to only 2% of the law school graduates that, are, uh, that graduate every year. Uh, just imagine 98% of law school graduates are coming out of law schools other than the national law schools. So if we want to seriously think about the future of legal education, should we be focusing on policy as well as regulation and governance of law schools which only focuses on analysis or should we, should we be having a more broader and holistic approach? So let me quickly go with what I really wanted to say. How do we build world-class law schools in India? For those of you who have a paper and a pen, the students, you can note it down. I have a 10-point formula, although I don't believe in formulas, but I do think that these 10 uh, aspects uh, are, let's say, characteristics of truly world-class law schools and universities. Uh, first, a world-class law school ought to have a vision and imagination. This is the most important aspect of institution building. You need to have a vision and an imagination for building a world-class institution. I don't know of any institution that has acquired a world-class status in India or around the world without having a strong emphasis on building a vision and having an imagination. Second, a more controversial one, world-class law schools and universities require significant funding. Significant funding and resources are sine qua non of world-class institutions. There is no university, no law school in the world which has been able to acquire world-class reputation without significant impetus and resources for them to acquire that status. Just to give you a very broad numbers, as it was mentioned earlier, I graduated from Delhi University law faculty as well as Oxford University and Harvard Law School. Harvard Law School's library budget, just the library budget, is approximately $150 million. Annual operating budget of the Harvard Law School's library. $150 million is approximately 750 crores. 750 crores is what Harvard Law School spends annually on its library. Doesn't include staffing. It simply includes only resources, books, materials, electronic databases, and things like that. So I can go on and on, but the second most important characteristic requirements of building world-class law schools is significant funding and resources. We can debate about who gives the money, government, private sector, philanthropy, we can talk about it, but you need a lot of money. The third, and the most important part of world-class institutions. Ability to recruit and retain outstanding minds. It is the faculty that is the heart and soul of universities and law schools. No law school can acquire a world-class status without its extraordinary and continuing ability to recruit the most outstanding individuals in its faculty. And in our country, we face a major challenge. The best and the brightest of our minds, not just in law, but also in other professions, are not entering into academia. I have given 5,000 talks across the country since I moved to India a decade ago. And I have spoken in most national law schools, in IITs, IIMs, in schools, colleges, universities, and many other institutions. And everywhere I have spoken to students, I have asked a question. And I see students here and I'm going to ask a question. How many of you among the students would like to become a teacher? One, two, three. All right. So that's the standard story across the board. Um, it's typically less actually. Uh, it's less than one percentage, if at all, of any audience I have spoken from Delhi University to NLS Bangalore to IIT Kharagpur to IIM to schools across the country, from Nagaland to Kanyakumari to Orissa to Madhya Pradesh to Rajasthan, wherever I have spoken to whichever audience in whichever discipline, the percentage of people, of course these are all top institutions, so it's less than 
and the crisis is looming so strong among the 46 central universities we have in india we have a faculty positions lying vacant approximately 40 to 45 percent faculty positions lying vacant unfilled for a decade iits and iams have a faculty positions lying vacant unfilled for for 30 to 35 percent for a decade the state public universities have over 50% of faculty positions lying vacant, unfilled. 